Bright guys, we're taking a look at the Garmin Fortrek 701 Ballistic Edition. It's actually a Garmin GPS unit that's mounted on your wrist that also has internally integrated into it an applied ballistics engine. Uh, so you got a ballistic calculator that fits on your wrist along with the GPS and a lot of other neat features uh, with a two inch display screen that weighs less than three ounces. I think it's like 2.8 ounces. And uh, this unit is uh, so packed with different features and all kinds of different things in it that I thought that it would be wise to actually uh, review these over a long period. And I've distributed these uh, Garmin 701s to quite a few of the Rex Defense training contractors so that they can get their opinion on it as well. And uh, we use this at the RX 3000 ELR course that we did at Hawks Double Mountain Ranch in Rotan, Texas, uh, where we're shooting targets beyond 25 and 2700 meters. And um, we got a lot of different opinions of this thing from both students and training cadre. And uh, I thought that that would be a good way to give you guys uh, a good idea of what it's like to go ahead and use these things, uh, what the interface is like, and how the different features work from coming from folks from different walks of life. Um, everyone's got a different way they look at things, the way they analyze things. And uh, I, I wanted to make sure I provide a wider base of knowledge on this particular review because it is such a complex device. And uh, people's experiences with technology in general is somewhat different, uh, coming from different backgrounds and different competencies with interfacing with technology. So I thought that it would be good to really let this thing kind of go out for about a year, let everyone get comfortable with it, find out all the different magic in it so that we can communicate that in the review we're going to do right now. So one of the cool things about the Garmin Fortrex 701 Ballistic Edition is that it doesn't require a connection uh, to the profile loader or any kind of app uh, to build your rifle profiles. Uh, the GF701 has the entire applied ballistics library built right into the device. So you can create profiles using the custom drag models directly on the device itself. Um, also, you there's not really a lot of limitation on the ballistic solution in terms of max range. Uh, this thing's set up, you can get calculations past 10,000 meters, uh, making it a pretty uh, good tool for ELR shooting. So it's not limited um, like some devices are um, in distance. Uh, there's a lot of different things that obviously you have to get into, even when you go out past one mile or even 2,000 meters uh, to get everything to work properly, but it does have kind of unlimited capability. So the max distance is not going to limit this for any kind of your ELR applications. Uh, let's take a look at the general overview of the the unit's features so you can kind of see what all is included in here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to turn the guys loose to do their comparative analysis and their review. And uh, we'll just let it come straight from the horse's mouth. <laughs> we'll let the guys talk and uh, share their experience with you on the device. This will be a very comprehensive review. Hopefully it'll give you a lot better idea of the capabilities of this device and also the things you want to know ahead of time before you make the purchase so that you know what parts of the game you're going to have to come up to speed on in order to most effectively utilize this device. So right off the bat, first thing I noticed when I got mine uh, is that it's a very durable unit. It's constructed to mill standard 810 gamma. Uh, so it's been checked for thermal, shock, and water resistance. Um, it's also night vision goggle compatible, which is pretty cool. So it's not something that's going to be limited uh, in the darkness. You don't have to turn on any kind of lights. You can use your night vision goggles for that. Now, this thing is going to work pretty much no matter where you go in most of the world. It's not only equipped with GPS, which I think currently has around over 30 satellites in orbit. I think at this time, maybe around 33 satellites. Uh, GPS has an accuracy within about five meters, which for some applications, um, you want to, you know, if you're going to use it to confirm distances to different things for shooting applications, um, that's going to be pretty close. It's going to get you um, within your danger space for most ranges. It also utilizes two other systems as well. In addition to GPS, it uses the Russian GLONASS system, uh, which is a Russian-based system, which actually has, I think it's under 30 satellites, but they're accurate within three to eight meters, arguably, and they're, they're up in their game every day over there as well. And it also uses the Galileo satellite system, which is the European Union system put up by the GNSS or the GSA. And that has uh, a very accurate capabilities actually within one meter. And um, actually in the encrypted version, you can get up to uh, one centimeter of accuracy <laughs> with the encrypted uh, version uh, by Galileo. So it's a very accurate system. 
Uh, if you've got good signal and good view of um, of the sky, and you can get the more satellites you get, the better it is. Um, but it does have quite a bit of flexibility. You can travel all over the world with this thing, and you'll still be able to navigate. Now, it has a, a multitude of different navigation sensors, including a three-axis accelerometer, a three-axis compass, and a barometric altimeter. Uh, and then it also has a, another interesting feature that surprised me. It's one of the things I, I didn't like about it as much, but it has smart notifications that allows your device to receive emails, texts, and alerts, which to me, I, I was trying to figure out how to get that thing turned off because it was it was a, a little bit distracting when they were in the middle of a task, and um, especially for a guy that's bombarded with text messages all the time. Uh, you know, you got a text popping up when you're about to do your firing solution, so that's something um, that maybe some folks would like, but for myself, um, not not something I would need. But for a guy that's going to use text for communication in the field um, and doesn't maybe want to pull out his phone, uh, that'll pop right up on your wrist. And so if you're uh, if you have a phone just for you know mission specific criteria, uh, you can receive your information right on the device as well. It can link up to your phone. Now this thing does have Applied Ballistics Elite software that calculates your aiming solutions for long range shooting. And we're going to get into that more in more detail in just a minute. We're going to go over the basic features of the device itself, and then we'll get in specifically to the Applied Ballistics program. The battery life on this lasts about two days in navigation mode, uh, maybe a little less depending on your conditions, and it can last up to a week in ultra track, and uh, it could potentially last up to a, a month if you're just using it as in, in its watch mode. So those different navigation sensors I just referenced, uh, they're going to keep you on track pretty good. The built-in altimeters are going to give you your elevation data uh, to accurately monitor your ascent and descent while uh, climbing up and down mountains. Also for uh, shooting, that's going to be important. And the barometer is going to be used to predict weather changes. Uh, so that's another uh, tool you can use for mission planning. Uh, if you have a barometer at your disposal and you understand meteorology, there's a lot of stuff you can do. You might know when the uh, visibility might clear up for a long-range shot if you got fog in the air. There's a lot of things you can do if you're smart when you're using these things. Uh, also, it'll show you short-term trends in air pressure which is uh, also very good for your mission planning in a lot of different ways. You can kind of predict when a good time you might have the, the best potential of getting to your max range if you're making an ELR shot. And of course, the uh, uh, three-axis electronic compass keeps your bearing even if you're not moving. So that's kind of a nice feature. A lot of GPS units, you got to be moving in order for it to work. This thing, you can uh, just sit, st sit still and it'll still get your direction for you. So if you're, uh, if you're FFP and you can't be moving around, it'll still give you a good reliable direction of fire. So the physical dimensions, it's uh, relatively compact. You can wear it without noticing it. It's 2.9 inches by 1.7 by about 0.9 inches in size. Uh, it has a two inch diagonal display and the resolution is 200 by 128 pixels. It's not a real super high resolution unit. It's in a four gray color, uh, but it does work. It doesn't have the high resolution topographical maps like the GPS map 60 or some of the other Garmin units would because it's a very compact unit. With batteries, it's just a little over three ounces. I think it's like 3.1, 3.2 ounces, depending on what kind of batteries you're using. These do use AAA batteries, two different AAA batteries. It's actually water rating of IPX7 which is uh, one meter testing. It can be submerged down to a meter under the surface of the water for 30 minutes and the device will still function. It might have a tiny bit of water get in there, but it's not gonna impede its function anyway. It does have a USB interface. It has maps and memory, base map, waypoints. I think it has like 500 waypoints in it. Uh, 20 different routes, 10,000 track logs you can do. And a lot of your Garmin outdoor recreational features too. So if you're gonna use this for bicycling or other things like that, you've got your area calculation, your hunting and fishing calendar, your sun and moon information, which is also good for mission planning in terms of lighting. So you know when you're gonna have illumination, uh, you know from either the sun or the moon. And it does have Garmin Connect compatibility. Uh, where you can uh, use your online community to analyze, categorize, and share data, which is kind of a handy deal as well if you're working with other guys. It does have customizable dual grid coordinates. It has audible tones if you need those. The GPS antenna is a patch style, and uh, under wooded cover, it can be a little bit problematic to get a perfectly good signal. Um, so there's other antennas that might work a little better. This is a very compact unit, though, so that's something to take into consideration. It has your uh, standard clock features like your date and time, uh, watch mode, military time format, if you use that, GPS uh, time synchronization, automatic daylight saving time. Uh, it does have a timer and a stopwatch and uh, your sunrise and sunset times.
It does feature customizable data pages like some of the other Garmin units. You can track your speed and your distance. Uh, your sensor compatibility uh, works with the HR strap, speed, cadence, verb, temp, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the GPS based distance, time, and pace. Um, and this thing actually has another feature, which is pretty high speed. This thing actually does have Jump Master in it, which is really nice for your skydivers, uh, particularly designed for military skydivers, your Halo guys, your Hey Ho guys. Um, so it allows military guidelines for calculating like your high altitude release points, your harp. Uh, the device also detects automatically uh, when you have jumped. So you can start navigating towards your desired impact point uh, using the barometer and the compass. It also has a lot of customizable features for jumping. Like you can enter your wind in for high altitude, high open jumps, the hey-ho jumps. Uh, you can do your static jumps, your halo jumps. Uh, it's very, very flexible for that. Uh, the Jump Master is a pretty cool program. You can also program in your drop altitude, your uh, open altitude, uh, your forward throw, and you can put in customizable constants for your safety factors like a K for open, a K for uh, free fall, and a K for static, which is a pretty nice feature as well. Some of the other features that I find uh, semi-useful, especially if you're using the metric system, is a distance to the destination. You can actually put in a target reference point if you're able to reconnoiter the target area. You can uh, type that in there and you can get a very, very accurate distance uh, to your target from your position just by using that feature. So it has all a lot of different kind of features. Uh, let's get into detail a little bit more on the Applied Ballistics Elite program. So the AB Ballistics engine that's used in this is actually a, a, a ballistic solver that's used by a lot of the real trusted professionals for quite a while. And I think the next generation of equipment that the U.S. Army and the Special Forces and a lot of guys all over the world are using is going to be based on this system. The ballistic engine by Applied Ballistics is very widely used in those professional circles. It does have the ELR core with a pretty powerful uh, processor and a large memory so that the device, you can do your calculation of those really, really long range, extreme long range uh, firing solutions. The program does have gun profile management so you can build and edit your profiles directly on the device or with the Applied Ballistics Profile Loader and the AB Analytics as well. You can have a lot of information stored in here. You can have over 100 different profiles. So if you have a, a various ammunition or if you're using your can versus not using your can, that can all change your velocity. Those are different profiles you could potentially put into there. Changing rifles, changing calibers, uh, changing barrels. A lot of different potential there for uh, flexibility. You can also have multiple save targets as well. So you're capable of storing up to uh, 10 targets at a time uh, so that you can edit and store your target information for quick reference later on. So if you have 10 different target reference points, you can just snap them in there and it's a lot more quick on the fly. This uh, unit does allow for ballistic calibration up to uh, six uh, drop scale factor calibrations which is a pretty cool deal. That's something that will allow you to get very, very precise with your uh, firing solutions once you get, get enough information to put in there, once you uh, figure out how to uh, true your inputs and uh, collect your information. It, you kind of got to be a little bit of a field scientist to most effectively utilize some of this stuff. There is some training required, in my opinion, in this program uh, to get the most out of the device. It's not something you're just going to kind of uh, go through willy-nilly and get the maximum performance out of it. You do got to read the instructions at the very least, and preferably if you could get training on the device, that would be very handy and uh, would be smart to use if this is something you're going to use for real-world applications. It does have muzzle velocity calibration capability, which uh, you can input the distance and the true drop of the bullet to determine your muzzle velocity, which is kind of a nice feature to kind of uh, sneak your way around uh, other problems that might be going on, but it's a very field expedient way of making it come up with the right answer. Um, there's a lot of different modes you can do in terms of your inputs and in terms of understanding and collecting your information to uh, get the best information in there. Uh, I wouldn't recommend always using your muzzle velocity correction features if you don't have to, but it is there in case you don't have access to some of that other more uh, detailed information that in sometimes in certain environments gets a little bit more difficult to get a hold of without setting up a full uh, field laboratory. One thing that's really cool is you do have a sight scale factor. So you have the ability to true the firing solution to the actual movement of your scopes turrets. Now, as you guys know, uh, throughout my entire video review series, I'm a stickler on the turret tracking of scopes because a lot of 
ballistic computers back in the day did not have this feature. And uh, so if you do have an optic where the tracking is not 100% precise, uh, you can custom adjust your math here to that scope. And so that you can use your turrets on your scope, even if they're off a little bit, this device will correct for them. Also, you have those custom drag models. Applied Ballistics was one of the first outfits to develop uh, the publicly available system library with the custom drag models, which is going to have different potential than your standard G1 and G7 ballistic coefficients that they advertise. There's a lot of other things that can come into the equation that can make your G1 or your G7 uh, not really effective, especially for extreme long range applications. There's so many different things that can adjust your actual drag. Uh, that's not quantified properly in, in the simplicity of the G7 equations. And so that's something that for more information, you can take a RX seminar or uh, we highly recommend it to take Brian Litz's class if you're using applied ballistic software and uh, they can explain exactly what's going on there. So it really uses a G1, G7 tested library. So you can choose from the custom drag models or... You have the option still of using the G1 or G7 when you're doing your profile building. So you can use whichever one works best for your particular setup. Of course, being applied ballistic software, this does have aerodynamic jump, spin drift, vertical Coriolis effect, horizontal Coriolis effect, max ordinate, uh, max ordinate range, which are all very nice things to have as well in terms of uh, knowing where your bullet's actually flying is a, is a nice thing to have in your features so that you can do mission planning if you're shooting underneath um, power lines or you're shooting underneath a bridge or you're shooting underneath uh, trees or if you just want to know where that bullet is flying how high above the ground is it uh, so you can make a better wind call things like that it's a very nice feature to have this does have a muzzle velocity uh, temperature table so you, you have the ability to to train for your muzzle velocity shift with temperature shifts which is something that we've been preaching about for years um, on the Rex Reviews channel and also in the Rex Defense Training, uh, uh, muzzle velocity variation is a real thing and it can really throw you off. So having a, a system set up to account for that is very nice. It does have free uh, profile loader access. So you have access to that AB profile loader. And all you need is your USB cable for uploading the new profiles from your personal computer. And the unit obviously does use those internal sensors that we talked about before for pressure, latitude, and direction. And so that all that's important information for your ballistics. You know, your barometer, you need to know your pressure. Your latitude is very important when you're talking about your uh, horizontal Coriolis drift effects. And your direction is uh, important for vertical Coriolis effects. And you also have an option of live feed from external sensors, if you so wish to do that. That can be connected to the Garmin for live temperature readings. There are challenges to properly running uh, this type of equipment, and particularly with temperature. And so on a wrist-mounted unit, a lot of times that unit might be warmer because it's mounted close to your body. So if you use this different methodology for deriving your temperature and you use external sensors, you can actually hook it up to the unit. You have your target speed and direction inputs you can do. And so with all that stuff I just described, uh, what we found out in the field is that the usefulness of this particular product is super highly contingent upon the operator's ability to properly run it. That is the huge thing. Now you'll get pretty close inside a thousand yards or a thousand meters, whatever unit you're using, um, if you just kind of stumble through the inputs. But in all reality, when you're using a device like this with this many different features, it doesn't matter how good the ballistic software may or may not be if you don't put in the proper inputs. You put garbage in, you're going to get garbage out. So this device does require you to read and understand the manual. And it does require a little bit of a scientific background in some ways to understand how important each one of those inputs is. Um, there, a lot of guys kind of slop through the inputs because they don't realize that that little detail can completely hose you in this way if you if you fail to put that in there properly. So that's something to stress. Um, the people that have attended the RX 3000 course that we do, the ELR course, we had a few different guys using these and uh, they did a very good job understanding uh, very analytical minds. A lot of the guys who come to our courses are engineers, scientists. They have no qualms about studying the manual, making sure all the inputs are right. They understand that it, that's an important deal and uh, they had very good performance in the field. Uh, we were shooting uh, beyond 2,500 meters and even out to 3,000 meters. And after they got all their inputs corrected, they used the custom drag models and they utilized all the different various features on board with the device. They were able to get very, very accurate uh, ballistic drop data with this device at the RX 3000 course. Um, but uh, if you just slop through the inputs, it's gonna give you a garbage back. So there's something to 
uh, be advised on is if you're going to get one of these deals and you're going to demand that top-notch performance, you're going to have to kind of become a little bit of an engineer and a little bit of a scientist in order to properly manage this thing because there's a lot of features and each one of those inputs you have to enter. It's not going to know all those inputs by itself. Um, even the temperature inputs, just understanding the basics of how heat is transferred and how you know thermal heating can occur in the sun and things like that are going to be very helpful for you to more effectively manage this device and know how to use it. So that's where training can be a, a real big help uh, when you're using technology like this because there's a lot of potential in it, but it is totally dependent on your ability to get everything programmed in there. And there's a lot of stuff. Two of the things that were probably the most challenging for myself in using the device is that although I have no problem understanding the physics involved, the ballistic uh, principles involved, uh, the interface, uh, you only have a few buttons on the device and paging through and learning the logic of how the system is set up. The system is uh, by necessity very simple with just a few buttons on it, which uh, makes it more durable, uh, makes it more uh, you know simple to construct. Uh, but the interface does take a bit of practice to get in, get through all the different pages and kind of learn it uh, how it works. And just entering it in at first until you get used to it is a massive learning curve. The interface isn't as friendly as maybe a guy would need who isn't super tech savvy. Um, once you do figure it out and you get everything properly set up and all your inputs are been trued, then it's relatively easy to use. Uh, you can set it on table mode. It'll give you very accurate data. You can just dial in your range and uh, it does take practice though. The other thing that I found interesting was its Bluetooth capability, which does make me nervous. <laughs> if that thing's talking to my cell phone, I don't know my cell phone's telling that and vice versa. Uh, but uh, in all honesty, I'm sure it's not a problem. Um, uh, there are uses to where a cell phone can be very handy to be integrated with the device. And of course, I'm sure you have the option of getting that uh, turned on or off. And so that's something that I found surprising to me was, like I said before, when the cell phone messages started popping up. That was pretty interesting. Overall, uh, this definitely has a place, in my opinion, in the professional market especially. And a lot of your real serious field guys use these because of their handiness, their ruggedness. Um, it's nice to have it mounted to your wrist. You're not going to lose it. It's always accessible. It's a very handy tool to put in the toolbox. Now, would I rely on this alone? I would not do that with any piece of equipment. You always want to have your primary, your secondary, your tertiary, your quaternary, and all your different backups to any device, especially when there's more technology involved. Uh, but this is a very nice piece of equipment that does fit into a certain slot in the market, uh, particularly with the GPS capability and the Jump Master program, especially if you're using it for those kind of deals, then it's absolutely a no-brainer. It's a tool that a guy should have in his toolbox. Uh, of course, there's uh, other mounting equipment you can use. You can attach this to the rifle itself, but it is nice to have it on your wrist. Uh, it makes it a lot more usable. It's always there, and uh, getting to it is a lot more quick. All right, so we're going to let some of the other uh, Rex Defense compadres here uh, get together and uh, kind of explain their opinions on the device, their experiences with it, and how it's worked for them. Uh, thank you so much for listening, and enjoy the rest of the review. Howdy, Rex here. 188 Mule. 188 did you, Mule. Did you hear the ding when he said that? Yeah. That's because it's <laughs> awesome. Hey, so uh, he's been employing one of these Garmin 701 Four treks with applied ballistics for a while, and what's been your observations? Well, um, seems to be accurate. Seems to work well. Once you get it figured out, um, had a buddy playing with it for about a month. He's more technically inclined or technology. Mm -hmm. He likes to play with that stuff, and he Mike's got it figured out really stuff. well. So, gave me some pointers because I'm not as well taught in that <laughs> area. Sure. And, uh, but yeah, once you got the temperatures and the velocities and verified the zeros at different ranges, they were right onto the charts. And, uh, so it seems to be working well. So how yeah. about, um, what do you find in the user interface side? If you, if you play with it, 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 it's fairly easy. It's easier than the Kestrel, um, to use. I mean, once you just... Like what I found that I use is the tables a lot. I just have it do the tables, like right. continuously range update cards. or whatever. Yep. Yeah. Make you some range cards kind of deal. Yeah, a little faster than uh, having the screen and you know having to change the range. 
for each, you know, on that screen. But. I mean, still even at that, it, I found that I had to kind of learn the buttons. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah. like, you can't hardly read them. And mm -hmm. there's only with four, them four buttons Just on the four button. buttons, yeah. And so that, for me, was the hardest part was the interface, like getting stuff put in the way I wanted it. But once you get it in there and... Uh, it's relatively easy. You turn it on and you go to the ballistics page and it's yeah. there. It's, it's going to be a handy tool. I can see that. I was kind of, ah, more stuff, you know, another yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. But it start using it. It's going to be handy to have when you're out, you know, beating around and and just another tool, you know. Plus it's got a GPS on it. Yep. That was nice. That's and, it, and it looks like one of them convict trackers that they put on their ankle bracelets. Yeah. So that people look at you dirty when you're wearing it around town. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't know about that. But yeah, like uh, I know that if you do the custom drag function feature on the applied ballistics one, it actually seems to be pretty accurate. Yep. Yeah, it looks like it's right right in there with the custom charts that we have made. Yeah. Um, through through your channel. Mm -hmm. They're and, pretty close. Yeah. And uh, as like anything else too, it's like all about learning how to manage it properly. Yep. Um, a lot of guys will critique one system or the other, but what you got to figure is how to manage all your equipment, balance it out correctly. It's, there's a lot to the science. There's uh, infinite variables, and they all have to be yeah. correctly assessed and uh, inputted. So, like, garbage in, garbage out kind of deal. Exactly. But once you get your uh, your stuff verified, once you get your, your everything trued up, and um, it's a very, very handy tool, and it actually works out pretty good. Even at extreme long ranges, we had guys shooting to... 2500 yards with it 2550 right. or whatever so yeah i i think i'll i'm gonna like it it's i mean i like using it was i'm skeptical about all that stuff you know yeah i'm it's, kind of old school too i like it duct taped to, to my rifle yeah right yep exactly you never, <laughs> and never lose it never like batteries a, never go dead but. like a minute ago we we're trying to film through the phone right like on a doing like you attach the phone to the reticle was, so yep, you can shoot scope. stuff yeah the scope phone deal and just as we're starting to, you know, ah, we're rocketing. Battery dead. Something happened. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it's cold out. So yeah. the battery doesn't work when it's cold. Yeah, exactly. So then I had to put it in my armpit for about three minutes. Yeah. Warmed it up to 98.6 degrees. I brought my battery from 0% to 32%. Yep. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's why you have a tape to your rifle stop. Yeah. Yeah, so, so, so many things that always important to have backup mechanisms, guys. But there are handy tools to use for your toolbox, and that's uh, another shooter's uh, impression of the Garmin 701 Fortrex. Thanks, cowboy. Yep, out. Hey, everybody, hope you're doing okay today. Wanted to uh, hop on here and give my thoughts on the Garmin 701 Fortrex. I uh, got this from Mr. Rex uh, in the mail. Oh, goodness. Several, several months ago, I want to say six to eight months ago, and have been taking it out in the field and using it ever since then. And so I wanted to share my thoughts with you. Um, used it in every environment from uh, ELR all the way down to uh, some uh, land nav to combat command and fire type situation to hunting. Um, to using it during some course instruction. Um, so I'll go ahead and run you through my thoughts on it real quick. I'm going to try to keep this specific to the Garmin itself and uh, not really get into the applied ballistic software which is included on the Garmin 701. Um, so I did get to use the Garmin 4, I think it was 401s uh, back in the day. Uh, the military is using those uh, here, you know, a decade ago. Uh, which was a tremendous upgrade over some of the units that we had prior to that. So it was uh, a really nice um, addition to your kit to be able to have a GPS on your wrist, especially when you're trying to pull up 10-digit grids and things like that and uh, use that as a tool out in the field. Um, this, this is leaps and bounds uh, technology-wise and, and user usability-wise um, from that time. One of the things I like about it is the user interface. So the user interface is very simple. There's uh, five buttons down here on the bottom of the Garmin. Uh, up and down over here on the right and the left, or on the far right, I'm sorry, and then kind of your menu buttons here uh, on the left-hand side and, and the power button. So the power button also controls your illumination on the screen. Uh, so you can turn that on or off just with one click of the button. Um, 
all of these buttons you can use with gloves on, which is also really awesome. That was something that was very hard to do with some of the other models and some of the other GPS out there is to operate these when you have gloves on. Um, I like the simplicity of this user interface. Uh, go to page uh, to scroll through. Um, so that's your page up and down. Basically just one button scrolls all the way through. It only goes one direction. Uh, so you go up and down and scroll through the pages. Uh, your main menu pages are right there. You can scroll through them as many times as you want. Yes, you are going to go past the page here or there and have to go back around to it, but that's okay. It's simple because under stress, it's, it's easy to remember one button to push. Uh, when you're ready to go to a page, uh, simply hit the enter button, which is right next to it, and, and you're on to the menu options for that page. Up and down arrow keys to select through the menus. Back would be your go-to. Uh, so to go forward into menus, you got one button. To go back into menus, you got one button, and then you scroll through your homepage with one button. Up and down, pretty simple. Um, each homepage has different uh, features to it, like uh, the applied ballistics page. Um, you can scroll through the options and things like that just with the up and down arrow keys. So you go to that page, uh, just go over to the up and down arrow keys and you can look at the options that are on that home screen uh, from there. Hit enter, go into the options and you can change the options there and all it is are these few little buttons. Very simple commands, very easy to use in the field and, and very reliable. Um, the tactile feel of the buttons, you actually have a little bit of a, I don't know, a a depression click so to speak so that you can feel when a, a depression has been made and you obviously can see it on the screen but it's easy to keep track of if you need to scroll to an item or things like that but you don't want to take your eyes off of what you're looking at you're just trying to get to some information you can actually do that without looking at this unit just by feel now you can't do that with gloves on um, or at least I couldn't the tactile sensation wasn't quite good enough to do that with gloves on uh, but you can do it with gloves off and so you can scroll through the options if you kind of have a good memory and you can remember where your pages are you can scroll through options uh, with your gloves off without having to look at the unit itself uh, that way you have quick acquisition of the information you're trying to get off of this unit um, the user interface of the applied ballistics feature uh, so I'll talk about that not not the applied ballistics software but the user interface okay um, it comes with uh, several unique features which I really really like uh, as far as the ballistic software all right you're gonna have the range card and the target card which I think are awesome so you can uh, build a range card which basically gives you um, ranges uh, like a like a ballistic drop table all right and you can set that all the way down to uh, I believe like one yard so every one yard, and you can scroll through one yard at a time if you want to to get your ballistic uh, compensation uh, brought on by the software. Or you can set it to whatever increment you want. You can set it to 12-yard increments. You can set it to 10-yard increments, 50-yard, 100-yard increments, 200-yard increments. And you can scroll through the range card and have a quick uh, reference for your ranges at known distances. Now, the second thing that you can do, and this is awesome when you're setting up... Uh, in a combat command fire type of environment or uh, in a competition environment um, or even when you're hunting and you have certain landmarks or things out in your area of operations in your field of view that you want to designate ranges to to give you quick reference you can use the target card and you can go in and create different range marks for targets in your area and uh, quickly reference those right there on the interface by referencing the target card after you put those uh, profiles in. Uh, putting the gun profile in and things like that, it's, it's all about your inputs. The more accurate you are with your inputs, the better the software is going to work for you. Um, that's a totally different topic when you're talking about the applied ballistics software, which is definitely a premier software out there. If, that's, if uh, you choose to use that within the, the 701, it's, it, you can definitely make it work for you. Um, but the user interface is what really stood out to me and uh, how effective that can be when you're uh, laying in a hide in a, in a hunting stand, if you're, if you're uh, up a tree, uh, whatever your location may be and your area of operation and your field of view for the targets you need to acquire, uh, it's definitely an awesome tool to use for quick reference and you can set that up specific to uh, your, your known distance ranges in the range card as well as known target reference points, uh, which you can do with the target card. 
Um, the actual GPS itself, one of the downsides that I do have, um, or the cons, so to speak, that I had about the 701, is the units of measure when it's doing distance measurement uh, with the GPS system. So um, I don't like that you can't get more specific with the units of measure or you can't cross them over, okay? Uh, I would love to do a range card in meters, uh, but still be able to look at yards and miles when I'm out walking around, especially here in the US. Uh, you can go one unit specific, so you can go metric or you can go standard or you can, um, it, it's just, I would like to see maybe a little more user friendly version of the units of measure and how you can personalize that to your specific unit. Um, and then I'd like to see maybe a finer measurement since this is a GPS and you can't pull, you know, 10 digits down to the grid, you know, as far as your location. It would be awesome if you could use that as far as uh, when you go to a different waypoint, if you could get measurements from that waypoint that were that exact. Uh, at times, it has about a 15 to 20 yard variation uh, depending on how far away you are. So that can be not a big deal when you're shooting close, but once you get into ELR, that can be a huge issue when it comes to danger space. So that's one downside. Um, if you are going to use this particular unit to set known ranges for targets in your area, just be mindful of that and be mindful that you have to know that there is a little bit of uh, margin of error in the measurement uh, that you're going to get on the GPS because it only goes down to, I think, 100th um, measurement, so two decimal places. Uh, beyond that, uh, the GPS works phenomenally. Um, it is a battery drainer. So if you're running this with the GPS off, you can definitely get you know four to five days battery life out of one of these units. If you're running the GPS actively, which I think is what it's for, so it should be used for, 48 hours is a stretch uh, in my experience. And one of the things that you can run into when the battery does run low is that um, you can have a hard time calibrating and also uh, acquiring satellites. So I did take this out once to the field uh, under pretty harsh weather conditions. It was raining outside uh, pretty heavily, so it was overcast, and I was in thick forested area with very thick underbrush. And in that instance, I was running on about one third battery, and uh, I, the GPS totally um, would not connect for me. Uh, several times out there and I ended up having to rely to other means to get out of the area that I was in because I, I was doing some land navigation type of stuff. So to get out of that area I ended up kind of having to re revert back to the whole compass and uh, get my get my azimuth back in line. But um, other than that, the uh, user interface on this thing is awesome. Uh, the reliability is awesome. Keep an extra set of batteries in your bag in your ruck, in your kit, and uh, make sure they're fresh if you need to rely on the actual GPS. I haven't found any issue with um, the software calculation or anything when it comes to the applied ballistics um, when the batteries go down. The one thing that you want to double check is the calibration when you are uh, looking at using atmospheric. So it does have a built-in barometer, which is awesome. Um, if you're going to use that feature, make sure that it's calibrated with your local station and you're not still getting... Um, you know, pressure from Arizona or something, wherever you were before, you know, you're now you're up in the mountains. Um, you want to make sure that that is pulling information from the area that you're operating in. And it's just one of those things to double check on your checklist if you're going to use that feature within the 701. My opinion of this thing is, oh my gosh, it's phenomenal. Uh, there are some issues that uh, I would like to see worked out, but other than that, uh, it's a great piece of kit and it has come a long, long way. And I would highly recommend this if you're going to be doing anything operationally where this type of tool uh, can be essential, I would definitely trust it. It's, it's going to do its job. It's going to get the job done and you can trust this thing out in the field as long as you do your part. Um, one thing I would like to see on it would be, I don't know, maybe some company out there, maybe somebody could come up with a really good uh, case idea where I can cover this screen. Um, I don't know if you can see it or not, but when you get it in the sun, uh, it does pick up a really bad glare. That's because it does actually have a pretty good uh, screen here that is uh, really clear and everything else. But with that, it picks up a pretty good glare in the sun. So if we could come up with something to cover that uh, other than, you know, tape or whatever I use out in the field, that would be awesome. 
But the Garmin 701, awesome piece of kit, highly recommended. Um, it's working for me. It stays in my kit. I, I don't go to the field without it anymore. Um, I've learned to trust it, and I've learned to do my part to uh, make it work for me. And as long as you do that, I think it'll work for you too. So uh, good luck and uh, happy hunting. Okay. So what we have is the Garmin Fortrex 701. The 701 has the applied ballistic software in it. The 601 is based virtually the same thing, just minus the software. So um, these will be replacing the Garmin, the real popular Garmin 401, I think, um, next year, 2019. Uh, okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, fire this guy up. I'm going to hold my thumb over my personal information, which you can enter in here in case I suppose if somebody loses it and they can t you, you lose this, you can turn it on and it has all your stuff on it. They can get it back to you. There we go. So this thing will run off two AAA batteries. Door in the back here. Um, you can select uh, alkaline lithium rechargeable. Um, battery life is about 48 hours um, in GPS mode up to one week in ultra track mode this thing has 500 waypoints in it which is awesome um, I, I know my map 60 only had 50 and I was always like deleting them and trying to you know trying to deal with that so that's pretty that's pretty awesome um, barometric pressure uh, the actual pressure where you're at which is what you're gonna want um, has a three axis compass in it which I think just means that uh, you can hold this thing straight up instead of I think with a two axis you, you had to hold them level uh, I think that's how that went um, all the rest of the standard the standard stuff that any of these Garmin GPS's are gonna have um, it does have Bluetooth connect so you can connect lots of accessories which uh, let's see if I can get you into there and show you that really fast let's go to setup uh, actually no right there yeah so you can connect all kinds of things to this heart rate monitor that's the kind of stuff you're into I've got the Tempe sensor which is this thing right here which I I kind of recommend getting it's about 25 bucks I think on eBay or something uh, this thing will tell you the ambient temperature which is nice you can also connect your phone I believe I haven't done this but it will allow text messages to come through this thing and you can read uh, that's pretty handy uh, let's see here it's got a night vision mode on it there you go you got your watch mode uh, hit that back back out of that exit watch mode your, uh, you can change all these fields just like you would do on a regular GPS very handy there's a dozens and dozens of selections so and on the side you can see you can scroll down through it um, I know if I do it's gonna have my location and all that goody good stuff but um, what I really like about this thing is the fact that I can wear this on my wrist take waypoints um, you know and I have my the applied ballistics all right in here it's on my wrist um, it uh, I still use the Kestrel um, for taking my um, atmospheric conditions uh, checking that stuff temperature wind um, all that and I will once in a while uh, double check my holds um, they both have applied ballistics in it this is the I think the newer version but um, I, I've had really good luck with applied ballistics um, and I, I really don't have I know there's other good ones out there but I haven't found a good reason to change uh, yet okay so we'll get into the ballistics page here you got your elevation I'm in I always use mills you can do MOA or inches um, you have your winds, you got like a high and low wind, your range, um, your direction of fire, there's your high and low winds, uh, direction of the wind. Now this is the specifics to that range, time of flight, lead if you need, uh, velocity, vertical Coriolis, horizontal spin drift, drop in inches. Now if you want to change any of this stuff, this is your options here. We have a uh, quick edit, range card, target card, environment, target, profile, setup. Okay. Um, quick edit. And there's going to, now you can change the range. 
you uh, select up, if we go up just whatever, you'll see it all change. We'll go up to like say uh, there's 1,008 yards. You'll see everything just changed. It updated real quick. Go into range card. Now this is, you can change the increments. I've got it in 10 yard increments, I think. Um, you can change these settings to whatever, uh, these fields to whatever you want. Um, there's your elevation holds. And this works awesome for, if you guys are putting your cards together, I mean, I've sat down there and wrote all this stuff down. And you can do it and then tape that to your side of the rifle, which we recommend. Uh, but if you want to change those fields, you can. I think you can scroll through there and whatever you information you want to see first, it will do it. It's very handy. And customize anything you want in here. Target cards, I think you can put up to 10 targets and all those holds and all that information per uh, of each target. Um, I, I don't use this that much, but I can see where it would be very handy if you were shooting that many bad guys. Um, your environments, I you will be in here a lot. Obviously, winds, directions, uh, latitude's going to stay pretty much the same. Uh, temperature, right now this thing is running off this little Tempe gauge sensor. Yep, you can edit it if you want. Um, anyway, right now my Accurite thermometer, we got 60 here. It is reading 60, so it's dead on. It does take a little while to change temperatures. Uh, it's not as quite as quick as the Kestrel, but it does work. I think it's like 25 bucks, maybe 30 bucks. Humidity, I leave it 50, unless you're shooting a long, long ways. Then it's um, kind of nice to make that more specific. But um, yeah, um, target, that's where you would type in all the information about each one of your 10 targets. Profile, um, this is where you would select which gun, whatever, whatever uh, rifle you're gonna shoot. Um, just got using the TK 308 for right now. Bullet properties. Uh, applied ballistics has faced virtually every bullet. I'm not going to say every bullet, but most of them. Um, and I think they try really hard to get all that in there. Um, so you can select whatever caliber you're using. It'll tell you how many bullets they have uh, in their database. So we go to 308. Let's see here. There's 202 bullets in there. Select that. And um, there you go, Barnes, Burger. I mean, it's awesome. You select your bullet and it will just automatically fill in the rest for you so you don't gotta go like researching all this stuff. It's really handy, I like that a lot. Gun properties, uh, there's where your muzzle velocity is. You can enable uh, muzzle velocity's temperature. So if you have, I, I, I'd not use this setting. As the temperature climbs, it'll automatically change the muzzle velocity for you. I think that's what that's doing, which would be really actually pretty handy. I haven't used it, but anyway. Uh, scroll through to show you some of the fields in here. Uh, muzzle velocity uh, calibration, uh, just like on this. Um, that's really nice. You throw a bunch of round, throw a few, few rounds on a paper at a certain distance and then uh, just calibrate your muzzle velocity with it and then it should put you on uh, or pretty close on the rest of the ranges. You got your uh, setup. There's your uh, input units, uh, spin drift, Coriolis effect, uh, aerodynamic jump. I always leave those all on. Pretty much it there. So there's not much that I don't like about this thing. Um, there, there's a couple of small issues. Uh, one is that I cannot seem to get when I, you know, got a waypoint here and I want to see my uh, my yardage. It's in meters and. Um, that's fine, but I mean, a lot of my stuff is in yards, and uh, I just cannot seem to get, the, I went through all the settings, and I, I just can't seem to get that to change to yards. I have not called Garmin yet, but uh, if I could get that in yards, that'd be fantastic. Um, and maybe there's a way, but uh, I have just not found it. Um, the other thing that is about, and it's not necessarily this device, particular device, it's just the fact that it's an electronic device. Um, it can fail. It can hit the bed. This thing hasn't. It's, it's ran flawless, but uh, um, I know that my Kestrel will sometimes freeze on me, and I have to shut it off, take the or I take the batteries out of it, get it to uh, and get it to to restart. 
but um, if you know uh, stressful situations you will not be able to uh, you know dial in everything you want in a big hurry with these buttons uh, it's just it needs to be simple it needs to be uh, I think a simple chart on your rifle is going to be the most effective um, even though I can run these buttons pretty good sitting on the bench uh, or just laying out comfortably in the field but when things start happening and I need to change these really quick uh, when times the clock's ticking you will not be able to uh, I just don't think you can run this thing and it's not just this device it's any of them uh, so but uh, that's really the only things I can say bad about it um, it's, it, for, it's no bigger than it is goes on your uh, goes on your wrist uh, it, it's it's crazy so just to give you guys an idea of how accurate this thing's been for me uh, with the applied ballistics um, we took a brand new Seiko TRG42, chambered in uh, 338 Lapua Magnum, uh, never fired, new out of the box. Uh, we put an optic on it, got the rifle set up the way we like it. We um, loaded up 10 rounds, uh, 10 Lapua cases with 300 grain Sierra Match Kings. Um, we took five of those rounds, we shot those across to V3 Magneto Speed, got our average velocity, which looked really good. And... Um, we took three more rounds. We did a hundred yard zero with the rifle. So we had two rounds left. We, um, I took this thing out and got a waypoint off a target that I'd set up at 1,514 yards. And um, we come back, got set up, and got set up with the rifle. Uh, we collected all our atmospheric conditions with the Kestrel, wind and all, what we could get. Um, put everything in here. It spit out a firing solution. So, first shot was 10 inches above center. Um, we dialed down a tent, fired the next round, the last round, number 10, and it was four inches right of center. So, we went from new out of the box, 10 rounds, to uh, on target at 1,514 yards um, with this thing. Uh, that was pretty damn impressive. So, uh, that was that uh, I, I, that's why I say I, I've really come to really learn to like this thing.